Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial by Leslie from Leslie Writes It All. Today we're going to be covering some uh, floral drawings as well as a watercolor sky. And like always, there will be step-by-step -step instructions up on the blog as well as a description and links to the items that I'm using below. I'm kind of excited because I got a couple of new things in like that Koi watercolor travel set as well as this Winsor & Newton watercolor um, block. It's going to be a cold press 140 pound uh, block paper and I chose to use the block watercolor paper in this case because we will be painting a watercolor sky um, which is going to require a lot of water and that means that paper will tend to warp. So if you have a block that is glued down on all edges it will actually keep your paper pretty flat. Uh, right now I'm using painter's tape to tape down the edges because I want a really clean and crisp edge to all our um, painting and the drawing. Okay, but before we get into the actual painting and drawing, I'm going to be going over a couple of things like which pens I'm using and then also how I draw a basic flower that we're going to be using for this piece. Um, so today I chose to use two pens, both by Sakura. One is the Pigma Graphic 1 and the other is the Pigma Micron in 05. So as you can tell, they're different size tip pens and they're going to draw different thickness lines. Um, I use the thicker graphic pen to kind of draw mostly the outline and then I use thinner micron pen to draw some of the finer details. I like to mix it up, it makes the um, drawing a little bit more interesting to have different um, size of, of lines in there. So begin by drawing the stem and then the center petal and then I draw two other petals on the side. Then I use the smaller pen to kind of draw in a little couple of the wavy lines that would be the veins of the petal. After that, you're just going to go ahead and fill it in with some filler leaves. I wait to do this at the end to kind of see um, how much space I want to be filled up. And then I basically just outline the leaf shape and then put a little bit of detail on the inside as well. So we're going to begin by drawing a ton of these shapes of flowers all over the bottom. Um, you want them to overlap and kind of fill in the bottom so that we will have a base to paint over. If you don't have the flowers overlapping then it, it creates kind of a weird gap where you're not sure where the sky would end. So I kind of have them overlapping and touching so that it fills up all that space. Um, so you'll see that I draw one in there to fill that up. Uh, we're going to speed this up a little bit but basically just alternate the, um, the direction of the flowers. Like I said, use the filler leaves to kind of take up more space where it looks a little bit more empty. Um, I also have a little tutorial guide for you guys. It's a downloadable PDF to kind of get you started on drawing these flowers. So if you need extra help, you can go ahead and find that in the freebie section or um, there'll be a link on my blog post. That downloadable PDF will have a step-by-step -step instruction on how to draw the flowers, but also a few of these leaves as well. So now I'm going to be switching over to my Micron 05 and basically just giving the flowers and the leaves a little bit more detailing. I love monochromatic black and white drawings, but of course we're going to spice it up a little bit with some watercoloring once we're done here. Um, just go ahead and continue to add some finer details. I think it makes the piece more interesting to look at, to see the different lines. I also make sure that the lines aren't that straight. I think it looks really pretty as a, a wavy thing. Um, nature is random and unpredictable, so I think that if you express that in your drawing, it makes it more interesting to look at as well. And now just the last step of the full drawing part is to fill in any extra space that you think um, needs a little bit more attention. So I just drew a couple more extra leaves for the flowers and then some, some leaves coming up from the ground as well. 
So like I said, I got some new things in and this Koi watercolor set by Sakura is one of them. I love how compact it is and it has almost all the colors that you really need in this little travel kit. So I would love to go to a garden one day and just start painting there and be one of those people that sit there and paint. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to now that I have this travel set. Um, it comes with a watercolor brush that I'm not going to be using today because we need to cover a pretty large area on the paper, so I'll be using a much larger brush than um, what comes with it. But if you notice, it comes with um, these little sponges on the side, and that's for you to kind of um, wipe off excess water too, which is kind of neat for travel. Um, the water brush is also where you would store your water so that you wouldn't have to bring like a little cup of water with you if you didn't want to. So I did have a little bit of inspiration for what we'll be painting today. Um, my husband got this for me um, for Christmas. It's a book on the celestial skies of um, Yosemite, which is just really pretty. They're all nighttime shots um, of the Yosemite area, and the um, skies are beautiful, and they come in such an amazing assortment of colors. So I'm just going to pick one, and we're going to just paint that as part of our sky. So the one that I chose has kind of like a dark purple um, that fades into a yellowy orange. Um, so we're going to try to mimic that today. So I actually began by wetting um, the whole paper um, with some plain water. I used a 12 round brush, a watercolor brush here. I'm just kind of putting down water just to help the uh, watercolors blend a little bit better when they come on. I realized that I probably didn't need to do this because I paint really slowly, um, but it ended up working well in this piece. So it's really optional to see if you want to do that. It kind of makes the blends a little bit softer. Okay, and since I began by swatching the colors, I kind of have an idea of what they'll look like on the paper. Um, when you have watercolors in the pan, the colors don't always come out um, how you imagine. So I recommend always swatching beforehand. That way you have a color reference. I'm starting here with a little bit of the yellow ochre and I'm mixing it with a little bit of the permanent orange to get that really light color. Uh, with galaxy or sky painting, you do have to build up color a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to do the first layer, but we are going to have to go back and add a little bit more after that. So I'm kind of blending it upwards um, because we are going to be doing um, a variegated wash which means that we're going to be combining it with another color so that that yellow is going to fade into a different color. Once you get to the halfway point with your yellow wash, um, you can go ahead and start adding um, the, the top portion of the sky which is going to be that darker purple color. I'm using a mixture of the ultramarine deep with the Prussian blue as well as a little bit of the Payne's gray. Um, the Payne's gray kind of goes more towards the top where it is darker um, and then I'm kind of just blending it all together and that's how you're going to create this variegated wash which is a wash of multiple colors. Um, just kind of filling it in. And like I said, you do have to build up color so it's going to take a little bit of time and a few layers to get it to the color that you want. And trust me you guys, galaxies look really weird, um, they don't look complete without the splatter. So if it's looking a little off to you right now, that is perfectly normal and mine looks really weird as I'm looking at it right now too, um, but it will, it will get better. Um, like I said, continue to build up color, we're just basically filling in, making sure that the wash looks really um, seamless from that yellow to that darker purple. Um, there is a little bit of, um, like it looks like a nebula in the sky, so I am using a paper towel to kind of lift up some of that color. So once you're satisfied with um, how the sky painting looks, you're going to let it dry and then we're going to move on to the messier part of this painting. So I'm using Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, which is my favorite type of white ink or paint. I use it for calligraphy and I use it for painting as well. Um, you're going to cover the portion that we drew and dip a toothbrush into the paint and use your finger to create splatter. 
So I created a little blob there and I'll show you guys how we uh, fix that. But go ahead and just continue making splatter and that's going to be the stars in our sky. So one thing I did wrong that you'll notice on the bottom left hand corner is I splattered the, um, the toothbrush at an angle and it created these kind of oblong type splatter. Um, so that doesn't really look convincing as stars so we're going to fix that as well too but um, just make sure that you're kind of facing the area that you're going on head on and not like at an angle otherwise you will get a different shape type splatter and then what I'm doing now is just using um, my watercolor brush to go in and draw larger stars in the sky I'm um, kind of making them look like a little shimmery but I'm also using them to make larger dots so I'm um, going to use a watercolor brush to do that Alright, so now to fix some of those weird spots that I did earlier, um, when the ink is semi-dry, you're just going to go ahead and use a watercolor brush that's dry, completely dry, to smudge it out a little bit. And since it's a sky, it kind of looks like nebula or like a cloud anyway. So um, just go ahead and smudge it out so it doesn't make such a harsh line on your paper. So I also have these jelly rolls, which um, I think is a little bit easier than using a watercolor brush to draw in um, different shapes of stars. So you can use them to add in larger dots as well, but I kind of use it to add those stars with a little bit of twinkle in them, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, I start with a little circle, and then I kind of just draw crosshairs. And that's basically it. It's pretty easy. And I have three different size jelly rolls from Sakura here as well. And that'll create different sizes of those stars. Okay, and as much as I love painting and drawing, lifting the tape off of a painting is probably my favorite part of the whole thing. And I don't know if that's weird or if you guys think that too, but it really is the best part of the process for me. Um, but I did notice that there is a little spot on the upper left hand corner where the tape probably lifted off a little bit and I'll show you guys a little um, trick to kind of evening that out a little bit. Um, but since everything is dry I used a bone folder to separate the top sheet from the block um, of watercolor paper. So I want to go over with you I guess a recap of the supplies we used. I have the Sakura Koi watercolor set that comes in the 24 pack. Um, I used the three different size jelly roll white um, jelly roll pens and then the two Sakura Micron and graphic pen. I also use a size um, 10 and 12 Princeton watercolor brush and of course I use the Dr. PH Martin um, blue proof white for the splatter and I also can't forget that I have a travel toothbrush that I um, take from hotel rooms um, so I use that as well and that's that's how I get my collection of toothbrushes for these projects okay so I thought we'd be done but that little corner is really bugging me so I'm going to show you guys how to lift color out of um, paper so I have a smaller painters tape I'm just going to use that to create a straight edge and that's going to help us um, guide us in making sure that we follow that straight edge from um, the, the previous tape Okay, so now all we're going to do is use a brush dipped in plain, clean water, and we're going to use that to lift out the color. So go ahead and dip the brush, and then just go back and forth. You're just going to go back and forth over that area, and then it's going to pull out some of the color from the paper. It won't get all of it out, but it's going to pretty much lift enough so that it's pretty faint afterwards. So it's a pretty tedious process and it's going to require you to wet the area, run it over with the brush, and then you're going to dab it dry with a dry paper towel. So it's just going to take multiple times and as you can see on the paper towel, a little bit of color comes off each time. So I use the brush to kind of really get in there. Um, the paper is very textured so you want to make sure that you kind of cover all the different facets of the paper. So that's why I'm kind of rubbing it back and forth with the brush.
you slowly though, you will see that the color is fading pretty significantly. Um, so it's kind of like just a shadow that's remaining. Um, that's okay with me. Once we take the tape off, it looks almost even. And ta-da! Looks like we're done now. Um, you could have stopped earlier, but of course I had to fix that because it was really bothering me for some reason. Um, and it was pretty easy to do. And you also got a little tutorial on how to lift watercolor off paper. Um, but that's pretty much it, you guys, for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new. Um, like I said, watercolor galaxies are really fun. They look a little weird, but they're really fun to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Leslie from Leslie Writes It All.